uh, we thought we'd start it off with, uh, with Mike Johnson. And the idea behind Perfect Pairings is basically to pair a chef uh, with a dish, with a drink, and we're going to talk about his restaurants and we're going to talk about all those things. So um, in the middle of that, we're going to also discuss kind of the state of the restaurant industry. But uh, Mike and I, we're going to try to do it a little bit differently. We're going to try to focus on some of the positives that have uh, ensued from, from, from the, the, this whole COVID epidemic. And there are positives. All we hear are horrible things, but uh, uh, we're going to try to focus on some of the positive things. But, but in the meantime, uh, we promised you a dish. And uh, Mike Johnson, was. Uh, I asked him to maybe come up with a Father's Day related dish since, you know, June is coming up. Father's Day is three weeks away. And um, uh, I, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it might be a grilled item with some fancy rub or some, you know, eggs benedict. But no, 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 no. Mike came up with something completely different. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn the to turn the, the, the viewer over to Mike Johnson, who has, uh, who has a dish and we're going to prepare a cocktail at the same time. So uh, go ahead, Mike. And again, Mike's the, the chef owner of, of uh, four or five <laughs> restaurants in town. Most people know who he is. And, and uh, he's known as the, the, the barbecue guru and, and the high point burger guy. But uh, he's also a very talented uh, chef. And we'll get into that in a nice little bit, too. But go ahead, Mike. Talk about this dish, because I, I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect. And of course, you didn't let me down. <laughs> well, first off, uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, it should be fun. Hopefully, there'll be another show. Hopefully, I won't screw it up for, for you and St. Louis Magazine. So um, I don't think so. I think we're going to be okay. But um, I made a donut burger because it's brunch. We're talking about dads and brunch. And um, I, I, we like doing this donut burger at High Point. It's actually called the Dad Bod. And uh, the, dad bod. the Dad Bod. <laughs> okay. I, I'm looking into a ladder. I, I had to put my computer on a ladder. So if I look crazy. <laughs> um, so it's basically, it's a strange donut. I, I love strange donuts. We love doing stuff with those guys. And I love the donuts. So I take a strange uh, glazed donut. And we basically just cook a burger with some bacon and cheese and a fried egg and just put it in between that glazed donut and then pow. Delicious. So, so the glazed donut acts as the bun. Do you grill the, the donut at all or do you yeah, just um, cut it you in half? Can. I mean, we do it at work. I mean, I, I can try it, but uh, we'll see what happens. Sometimes that sugar, um, all that sugar on there gets so hot and sticky that it'll burn your fingers. You know, so I, I probably, uh, am, you know, first time don't grill the donut. For the pros that have had this before, grill a donut. And uh, this is a this is an item that we've seen before. I remember seeing something similar out at the Gateway Gateway Grizzlies, yeah, uh, ball field. I actually and thought they invented I, it. I'm sorry. I actually thought they invented it there, the Luther Burger, but then I googled it and they didn't invent it. It was invented like in Georgia or somewhere or um, Luther. Vandross. I googled it too, and and supposedly it was invented by Luther Vandross. So there's all these stories, but what did you call it? The dad bod burger? It was invented by a big Luther Vandross, not skinny Luther <laughs> Vandross, right? Because there's two of them. There's two, two different guys, right? Wasn't there like a huge one, then he lost like 200 pounds or something? Sounds good to me. So anyway, but you're, you know, as a, as a chef does, you're going to take, the, take yeah. this simple item and change it slightly. I know you've got a, a special burger that, that you're going to use, yes? Yeah, so we use a special blend at High Point. It's um, it's kind of a secret blend, but I can let you guys know the secret. It's uh, we take. Uh, it took months to develop. Uh, you'd be surprised. There's different cuts of beef that do different things for hamburgers. So the chuck is 50% chuck, 20, and that's the body. That's that's the bite, the chew to it. It's 25% brisket, and that's the fattiness uh, that you get. And it's 25% uh, short rib meat, and that's that big beefy flavor. If you were to eat a and I'm glad that I calculated my math before I did this, because usually I don't know that 50, 25, and 25 is 100%. So, um, but that's all it is. It's basically three three parts of that cow, that, and they're each given a little different part of that burger for, for the flavor. And this is the same burger that you serve at, at the High Point Drive? Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, same one, same one. You don't want to get too, I mean, I don't know if you're on a diet or something, you can get lean burger, but I like it to be really fatty, especially when you're doing that smash patty, because you're, you're cooking it well done. Pretty much, if you're doing a big mid rare one, it's okay, you know. But that smash patty, you got to get it crusty and it's cooked all the way through. But you need a lot of fat, that brisket fat in there to keep it moist. And you've won a lot of burger competitions using this particular burger. I, oh yeah, I remember. I remember eating a burger and the and the juices were dripping down my elbow. Yeah, we won <laughs> um, two years ago. We won third at the World Food Championship in burger. 
We won. We won sandwich. Uh, that was no three years ago. We went, got third in burger, and two years ago we won best sandwich. And that's kind of a big deal for chefs and restaurant people. It was, it was pretty fun. And uh, you know, for this burger, I mean, the the viewers can go and get a, just a, a better. You know, you go to to any butcher shop or, or any grocery store. Really, there are there are several grades of ground beef, and you can you know the, even a butcher will uh, custom make exactly what you asked. Uh, it, you know well, exactly what you specify. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it might cost them. you a little bit, but you can get that exact same burger from the butcher shop uh, if you so order it. Uh, I, I didn't know that until I started asking about this thing. And if you're going to go that far, have them grind 10% uh, bacon into it. Why not? You know, <laughs> no, they do it. I'm, I've done it before. Now you're talking. Yeah. So uh, so you've got the burger cooking. Is that what, uh, so, what, what stage are we? Should I start it? Yeah, I'll sure. Make a cocktail first. So are we making a cocktail? Yeah, yeah. Let's do make the cocktail. Let's do. Let's make the, it's just gonna be better cooking the burger, have a cocktail. I'm sorry. I think, the, I think I'll start the cocktail. So, I got some um, bourbon here. Is that okay? So, this is a really fatty burger. So we need a. Uh, this is perfect pairings. So I thought we would make a. Uh, um, it's called a sunshine. Um, I forgot what it's called. Sunshine Boilermaker. Boilermaker, Boilermaker, that's right. No, I knew that, I knew that. Sunshine <laughs> Boilermaker. So it's basically uh, a lemon beer. So I got some lining kugels. I wanted to go local, but they had this lining kugels, lemon flavored beer, a little lemonade. And then I got some Knob Creek smoked maple flavored bourbon. And we're just gonna basically pour that all into a glass. I'm gonna pour that and then I'm gonna start the burger. Is that okay? Sure. So this particular drink is, it's basically a variation on the Boilermaker, which is just a Boilermaker. It's just a shot of, whiskey and a beer, right? And yeah. you remember doing Boilermakers when you were younger, right, Mike? Didn't you take the shot and dump it into the beer? Do you remember that? Oh, it, it, we didn't do that at church camp. I never <laughs> I never heard of that. Well, unfortunately I did, I, but I remember it was called a depth charge, right? I'm anyway, just, we're, we're not doing that today though. We're gonna, this is a little more civilized version, but this is a, this is a three ingredient uh, a drink. Yeah. So. You know, I, I've lived in Chicago for a long time, and I, I love these uh, Lanny Kugels. I always thought this is one of my favorite beers. Well, I'm making one too, Mike, and I'm using this uh, number six Stam Usual Lager. Let me. Oh, that's fun. So uh, basically, you, you you pour a beer into a pint glass, right? And you take about two ounces of bourbon. Is that what you're using, Mike? I might put three ounces in. There you go. Well, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use a uh, still 630 bourbon. Actually, actually, it's a it's a rye it's a rye whiskey, oh, and this is uh, this is uh, 120 proof. What I'm using because you know, it's happy hour. What the heck? You're already home. A little bit. <laughs> you ain't driving nowhere. Cheers, right. bud. Thank you. And then you put a little floater of uh, of lemonade in it, right? I I put some lemonade in there. Yeah, I put about an ounce of lemonade in here. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for dads and for, you know, oh, you talked about how, how well this tasty. Dude, it's, it's awesome. The Sunshine Boilermaker. Mm, that is tasty. Okay. You know, and if you don't have bourbon and if you don't have, you know, uh, lemonade, you can just serve dad the beer. And I don't think he'd object to that either. Oh, yeah. That's, so that's what I'm thinking. I've got what I call a grill farm in my backyard. I've got probably seven or eight different grills. Um, this is my favorite one I use the most often. It's called a Green Mountain Grill. It's a, it's a pellet smoker, but it gets it can get really hot. And it's really simple. So I, I like to cook burgers out here. So did I hear you say grill farm? Is that what I, I have heard? A grill farm, yeah. So I have um, you can see back here. I have two vintage uh, Weber kettles. Two Webers. Uh, they're both from the early uh, one's late '60s, the green one, and another one's from '71, the yellow one. And then I, I got drum smokers over here. I got a few of these green mountain grills. I got a green egg back there behind this. I don't know if you can see it. I can I see a, it. How many of these do you use? Do you use all your all grills? Of, all, all different things. All different things. Um, so you live in your backyard. You yeah. Really do live, you live what you do. Yeah. Well, I, I love my backyard, especially like for this whole quarantine thing. I, I think I told you before, um, back in March when I knew when I heard me to stay home for like a month or two, and I had all my kids back from college, I um, we went to Home Depot right before everything started, and I got like 3,000 pounds of sand, and so we dumped sand on the deck over there, 
and uh, so we could have a beach to lay out at, and we could and we could pretend like we're on an island and not in St. Louis. So, I mean, you can tell I'm I'm pretty dark, man. I lay out a lot. So, <laughs> I remember talking to you about that, and you said yeah. that you made um, jerk chicken for like a every a, day a rum cocktails. Oh well, it's rum. And drank, yeah, drunk rum cocktails, reggae it's music. Just once yeah, that's all we do. Everybody, it's been great. Um, so I have a, this is a ceramic pan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook an egg in there when this bird gets a little closer. So you're doing this whole, basically this whole dish on that pellet smoker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, um, I don't think you can see me. I'm going to, I have a donut uh, from Strange Donuts. I'm going to cut it in half right now for the bun. I love this drink, by the way. I'm sure the burger's tasty, but this drink is really good. There you go. That's my bun right there. So this is something that you serve at uh, High Point from, high, from time to time? Uh, from time right? to time. We'll definitely do it on uh, Father's Day, which I think is in a few weeks, three weeks. I should know three I got weeks. so many kids. Um, Hopefully they'll let you know. <laughs> the older I get, the less they care about Father's Day, though, so, you know, but... That's that's oh. how it that's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. So um, uh, but you don't have to have that grill. You can cook all this uh, right on a oh, right inside. On stove, I mean, I was, right? you know, if, if I was going to get rain down, I was going to do this inside. But I, I just like being outside. You know, I love my backyard. I love grilling. I, this Green Mountain Grill is too easy. You know, and uh, there's no cleanup. You know, because I noticed for this whole quarantine, I'm the only one around here that does dishes. You know. <laughs> No, for real. Everyone's it's like everyone's making a mess. And I'm like everyone's personal maid around here. So So yeah, with that pellet smoker doing the dishes, yeah, no. you just you just, you just close okay. the lid. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, close yeah, and forget about it. So those pellet smokers can use any any different type of pellets. What what yeah. pellet are you smoking with? Uh, uh, and what do you like I, to use? I mix them up. I'm kind of a queen about my smoke. So I, I I use I mix them up. I mix cherry and hickory. Those mm -hmm. are my favorites. Um sometimes I'll put an apple. But I, I prefer fruit woods, and then if I want a little more punch, I'll use mesquite or yeah. or something like that, you know, just to give it a little more oomph. You know, I've got uh, I've got one of those grills myself, and I do the exact same thing. Use fruit woods and, and occasionally mesquite if you really want it to, if you really want some some it serious flavor. Of, it takes a lot of the guessing game out of this. And we've won a lot of barbecue competitions with this Green Mountain Grill like up against like you know the Gizmar, because it's just so easy. You just turn, you just hit a button, and you set the temperature. And you walk away, and the temperature is one of the most important things with barbecue. So it's just easier, you know. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, you were a fine dining chef for a long time. I mean, that's when I met you. You were yeah. doing, the, you know, I, I I had to list all the restaurants because there were so many. You did Cafe Mira. You did Boogaloo. Didn't you start Boogaloo, uh, which yeah, is still oh, yeah. there? You did um, mm -hmm. uh, Barcelona. Wasn't that yours initially? Barcelona, Momos, um, Cafe Mira. Some, I mean, I had some of the good restaurants that are still open. Uh, I'm not in anymore, and I had some of the worst restaurants ever <laughs> in St. Louis, probably. Fu Manchu I was involved in. That was the one I couldn't think of, Fu Manchu, and then you had Figaro, and you had uh, El Scorcho. Oh, Scorcho. Hey, before it's time, uh, my all-time favorite was Kaboom, the kebab fact. That was very short-lived. Um, that was so short-lived, I completely forgot about it. But anyway, the point is, you're a fine dining trained chef, but you ended up in the in the barbecue business. Yeah. And you told me, when we talked about this, when Sugar Fire started six years ago, you said you've never been happier in your life. And yeah. this, is, this spans, you know, 20 or 30 years of, of yeah. your career. So is that still the case, or is this just oh, become yeah, a job bad. for you? I just love, uh, I love what I do. I never take a day off. If I'm in town, I, I travel a lot for barbecue. Uh, I mean, not anymore, but the last couple of years, I'm in Australia two, three times a year, Brazil a couple times a year. How does that work? Are, are people sponsoring you to, to go yeah. there? And are you yeah, spreading yeah. the gospel of barbecue yeah. or what's the, what's the point? Louis barbecue because I, I feel that we have, you know, Kansas City, Texas, they get a lot of props, but I think uh, Memphis even, yeah. I think huh. we're the best barbecue, you know, and, um, but they get all out of process. So it's just basically spreading the gospel of St. Louis barbecue. And um, what happens is there's these big festivals around the world for American style barbecue. And somehow I kind of got in the circuit where they started calling me about five, six years ago. And I would come and represent American barbecue. And it's been wonderful. Um, 
I mean, uh, Australia to me, it's just so much fun. I go there. I got, I got tons of friends there. I love it. Uh, Brazil, um, Amsterdam. I got a lot of friends all over the place. Um, every country. I mean, every, every continent almost I've been to just doing barbecue. It's been great. That's, that's unbelievable. You're, um, yeah. so you've got several restaurants here now. Uh, everybody knows sugar fire. There's a whole slew of sugar fire. Some of them are, are franchised. Uh, you've got high point drive in, yeah. uh, you've got, um, you're, you're, you're a partner in Cyrano's, uh, there's yeah. sugar fire pie, which, you know, yeah. there's a boathouse in Forest Park. And, and, and then there's a boathouse. So if I was to ask you very quickly, just one, just give me a quick one liner about each one, like something that people don't know. What, what, what about sugar fire? My dog might people not know. Everyone knows what it is, but tell me something that people don't know. Um, fun fact about, uh, our desserts are just as good as our barbecue. That's one. Uh, we're the world champion of baked beans. We're the 2019. Uh, we're the current. We're the reigning world champion of, of baked beans. Best baked beans in the world. A lot of people don't know that. There you go. That, that's American perfect. American Royal certified baked beans champions. How about uh, how about uh, High Point Drive-In? Uh, High Point Drive-In. A uh, little known fact: the spaceship on the roof. Oh, a little known fact: uh, the cow on the roof is named George Muhi. How about that? I, I, I was hoping you wouldn't bring, I hope you, hopefully you were going to stay with the spaceship, but yes, uh, that is my claim to fame. Uh, I do have a cow named after me and I have you to thank for that. So the spaceship I found in a junkyard, it was being used as a chicken coop about five years ago, somewhere down in Dutchtown. And look how beautiful it is. I mean, it's amazing. It's, 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 it's a cool building. Yeah. Uh, and, and people don't know that, well, they should know that sugar or that uh, High Point Drive-In isn't a drive-in at all. Neither is the one downtown. Yeah. No, uh, originally it was going to be a drive-in, but I think the years of having the drive, people driving through Del Taco and Noggles, the drunk people, and doing crazy stuff at all hours in people's yards, uh, the city didn't want another drive through there. Understandably. So. Now, now with the one in O'Fallon, which just broke ground, I understand, is will that, one have a, will that one have a drive-through? It'll have a drive-through, yeah. I think with all this coronavirus stuff going on, I, I think um, the future of, fi of fast casual is, is going to be a lot of drive-through. I mean, yeah, I, I, I drove by, I went to Deerberg's today and the Chick-fil-A had a hundred cars in line, you know? Yeah. All the, down the road, it's crazy. Well, the drive drive through business was was crazy before the virus hit. And now, I mean, some places are doing 70% of their business at the drive through which is just staggering. Uh, how about uh, Cyrano's? What, what's, uh, what's going on at Cyrano's that, that people don't know about? Uh, we're gonna reopen next week. Um, you know, Sierra is known for desserts, but really the food there is amazing too. And here's the craziest fun fact that nobody knows. Um, I, I worked the menu for years and kind of uh, Bill Cardwell, who I think is the, I would call the godfather of great chefs in St. Louis. Absolutely. Uh, he's been, since he's kind of retired, he's been tweaking our menu over there. And uh, I mean, he's, he's the best chef to me in the history of St. Louis. I yeah. mean, he was, a, he was the original farm to table chef. The original. I mean, and, and he the grew drink. up, right? He grew up on a farm and, you know, farm to table was for him was eating dinner. And, and uh, he, he, uh, he, he got throughout St. Louis at a worker book. Anytime someone comes along and has Bill Cardwell on the resume, hired instantly, in, instantly hired. No questions asked. So he's tweaking the menu, but it's not going to be a yeah. Bill Cardwell restaurant. Well, he's just taking the good things right at Cyrano's and just making a little better. Yeah, yeah. I'm more fly by the seat of my pants, you know, sprinkle some salt on, or whatever on it. And Bill is a professional, true professional yeah. in every sense of the word. He is. And, and everybody that has met him knows that he's, he's the best in the business. Oh, yeah. How about Sugar Fire Pie? I mean, sometimes that's yeah. overshadowed a little bit because it's in the shadow of Sugar Fire over there on Olive Street. I always used to say it's the best desserts in all of San the best desserts I've ever seen in my life. Uh, we have the best pastry chef at, of all time. I'm not just saying that because she's my partner. It's true. I walk in there every day and the product that they put out over there is as good as anything you'll find in New York or Paris. I'm in Paris. I, I go to France. I'm in France all the time. I worked in France for years. Um, I mean, not anymore. I don't think I'm going there anytime soon. You know, but uh, I mean, I'm just telling you the food there is so amazing. I mean, you can go in there one day and have like some crazy pop tart or some whoopie pie or stack pies i mean she bakes pies inside of cakes called uh pakes she'll bake a cherry pie inside of a chocolate cake it's stuff that'll blow your mind that you know Those we think they're outrageous high point but it's rivaled by all of our pie shop stuff 
you know. And then uh, you you also, uh, you guys took over Boathouse a couple years ago. And, yeah, uh, oh man, that's been wonderful. Um, working with the park, it's a classic venue. Uh, now that's we, opening up soon, right? Yeah, that'll open next week uh, uh, for like, you know, social distancing type of stuff. It's a big spot. Uh, we're going to be careful to open it because that place gets crazy. And um, we just don't want to, you know, couple thousand people on top of each other so there's going to be a lot of tables all spread out it's a big area you know we're going to start slow next week well unfortunately it is a big area you can accommodate a lot of people yeah. you've got that tent okay. area too right yeah for sure i'm gonna so uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that you can cook and talk at the same time yeah, you're, awesome. you're a very talented guy uh, <laughs> it's really really hard you're the training so, rocket science three to figure this out how how are you guys? I mean, I, one of the things I wanted to focus on is is uh, you know we've all been involved and we're all just in the middle of this this horrible situation and everybody's like oh my gosh this is terrible and what was us and and what are we going to do? But I, I want to talk to you about what what your company has done. I mean, uh, th there's a lot of uh, things that have happened. Uh, there was that uh, uh, funding initiative that, that you did. Yeah. You did three different weekends. You know, just, you know, nobody's making any money and, and you're out there yeah. making money and giving money away. So I thought that was, that yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. Like one of the things that always bother me about people not wanting people to be open is this health before wealth thing, which I understand, but th there's no, it's not wealth. Nobody's making any money. We're losing our shorts and we're staying open to keep you employed and, and pay the rent is what it is. What, um, no, it's been, you know, we're in a unique position because we've done so well in St. Louis over the years. And, and Charlie Downs, my partner, he's the captain of the ship and he's really, you know, everything goes through him and he's been steady and calm the whole way and he makes big decisions and good decisions for us. And really we've taken the attitude that uh, just be positive, you know, and, and uh, it could be worse, man. It could be a fine dining uh, all steak restaurant where the meat prices have gone through the roof and uh, you know, like I, I, these big steak places, I mean, what are they gonna do? I mean, they, they can't fill up the 25 percent capacity, you know, and we're well, in carry out and carry out's uh, the only thing that's doing okay right now. And, you know? and it's interesting because I've been talking to guys and even a guy in a steakhouse and, and he's opened back up and he's, he's very positive. They're doing yeah. really well with 25% in addition to the carry out. Good for him. Good and, for him. And, and he said each day it gets a little better and he learns a little more. And I think, yeah. again, these guys that were kind of afraid to get back in it are, are figuring out ways to do it. And I think that's, you that's gotta a push on. You got to push on. And, um, the thing that one positive thing about this is we're all becoming better restaurateurs. I mean, not that I knew everything about the restaurant business, but we've done pretty good the last few years. And every day it's we're concentrating and focusing, hey, what can we do to make this operation cleaner, to make it run better, to, you know, treat our employees better, to make everything safer for everybody. It's always a learning experience. And, and I think I you're better. becoming not just better restaurateurs, but better businessmen. I mean, you guys, let's face it, some some restaurant guys were, you know, very creative and, and they had great ideas, but they weren't good at running the business. And now everybody's yeah. been forced. We've all had two months to sit back and really examine how to make use of the yeah. funds that, that are coming there. And that's, and that's why I've been so lucky over the years because I got Charlie you know, I, I, I'm good at ideas. I'm a good chef, but my business sense is not that good. Sometimes it makes them, you know, I'll, I'll like see something like, Oh, let's go buy that. You know, and we, that's been great about having him to be run our whole operation. Well, you're a good, uh, it's a good yin and yang partnership. Yeah. And, oh, and, sure. and there's a lot of these guys that have, that have said, you know, this is, you know, this thing's been a challenge, but it's also been an opportunity. Uh, and, and I think that's the way you have to look at it. You have to go to work and, figure out a way Got to figure to, it out to make it work it's a sink or swim situation and and a lot of guys have said you know what this isn't going to work for me and but i i love the creative spirit uh, uh, in st louis because a lot of guys have figured out a way you know to make it work and like you said it's it's a uh, you guys smell it's, that it's, <laughs> mm. Sorry, George. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's you know it's drive-throughs like you said, and it's pickup windows, and it's it's carry out, and it's delivery, and guys are using all these things uh, to their advantage. And and um, 
you know, I even think some of this cheesy stuff like the mannequins in the seats in, in the in it little Washington, you might say, oh, that's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But it's these gimmicky, hooky things will bring people in. And in that sense, I think all these ideas, as silly as they may sound, are good. And, and again, these are restaurant guys that are coming up with this. And quite frankly, I, I love hearing about all this. And, and I say, bring it on. Bring on that burger, too. What you guys think about that? Look at it. Watch this. That's my favorite part right there. Well, you got to eat that, man. Don't let that <laughs> drip on the ground. I got my dog down here. I got a little friend. <laughs> so, uh, so you're going to, somebody it. might, somebody might make you this for Father's Day or you might just make it for yourself. But what do you serve on the side of this thing? What, uh, is there a side dish that, uh, you know, crinkle cut fries or what, what do you got? Deep, deep, fried, deep fat fried Twinkies is the only thing you can do with that. Oh, there you go. No, I don't know. It's something. I mean, a side of, shot of Pepto Bismol, maybe, something, and a shot of Lipitor to to take to take care of those things. But anyway, that's those are those are those are super items, and uh, and like I said, I'm I'm gonna enjoy this cocktail for a while. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and and maybe take some. Let me let me take some questions here. Let me see if I can I can dig up a few questions. Stand by. Made me smile, love the optimism. Well, that's good. That's encouraging. Yeah, I mean, that's why we wanted to do this. You know, you and I are kind of glass half full guys and, and all we're hearing is doom and gloom. And I just thought there are so many positive things and there, there are initiatives coming out of this, right? That, yeah. um, uh, that, that are, that are going to help restaurants in the long term and, and, and prevent all of this from happening again. There's going to be, uh, you know, uh, grants provided, not loans, right? Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many restaurant guys I've heard from. It's like, the last thing I need is another loan. Yeah. So you're going to well, see, my, see, you know, uh, again, I hope we can, we can prevent all this from uh, happening again. And my oh, favorite thing, honestly, is uh, everyone in the community coming together, all the St. Louis chefs coming together. Because um, you think there's a lot of competition, people don't like each other. That's not the case. It, like remotely at all. Like, I mean, I'm, everyone I know is more of a rising tide lifts all boats kind of people like I love Pappies and Beast and Super Smokers and you know Salt and Smoke they're all my good friends they're all family and uh, everyone's just looking out for each other and helping each other out and that's the way St. Louis has always been and that's when when chefs come to town they're just they're just amazed at how much uh, the chefs in this town get behind one another and they're competitors but they're not it's just I hear it all the time hey there's something we forgot to talk about completely you have a new restaurant coming up a brand new restaurant opening in a couple of weeks Cacaw, cacaw, y'all. <laughs> Is that the name? No, it's called Chicken Out. So in it's uh, in the loop, uh, it's fried chicken sandwiches. No, I mean, it's not like, you know, original recipe or anything like that. It's chicken sandwiches, simple, um, fried chicken sandwiches. And we're open on June 17th, so. So, so fried chicken sandwiches. Uh, uh, it's in. It's in. Uh, it's on the corner of of Skinker and Delmar. In Delmar, right? yeah. In the old I've Petroni pastry space. Yes. It's been one of my favorite corners for years. Um, we decided to open it at the worst time in the history of the world on purpose. I, no, I'm just kidding. It's happening. We we decided to do it six months ago, and it's going to happen in a few weeks. So we're going to let it rip. Um, we're really looking forward to it. It's coming out beautifully. It's almost built out. Uh, the menu is incredible. I, humble bragging there. It's, it looks really good. It should be good food. And uh, we're looking forward to it. And uh, what else besides uh, fried chicken? Uh, fried chicken sandwiches. That's it. That's and, it. I mean, like crinkle cut fries. You know, there'll be, there's a basic one, a hot one. And then we'll have, you know how we do it. Uh, there'll be five or six crazy sandwiches. Like I got like a, a cheap and cheddar. Uh, uh, I got a which is like a beef, Arby's beef and cheddar, but with fried chicken. Uh, there's like a McRib knockoff with fried with with chicken on there. Uh, I got one called Mo Parm Mo Fowl. It's like a chicken parm sandwich. There, there's a bunch of them. I got a faux hawk. That's a vegan chicken. You know, salad. Well, you said chicken sandwich, and now you just rattle off about twelve items. But it Those sounds all they're all sandwiches though. And then there's some, uh, a couple salads. And you know, really, I think you know those type of. Uh, um, those type of establishments are going to do very well. It's a lot of that is geared toward carry out and, uh, and delivery chicken sandwiches travel very well. So that'll help yeah. you. 
yeah. you know, and that's another thing that, that, that came out of this too, and all the great to-go materials and to-go packaging uh, yeah. that, that, that's come out of this, this COVID thing. Everybody's figuring out a way to deliver better food. And, you know, there's another positive and, and uh, uh, delivery too. There's, there's all this to talk about third-party delivery and how that's going to change and whether people are going to go to self-delivery. Let's face it, uh, it's gotten too expensive and something has to happen. So there's another positive that, that's come out of this. So you'll do a lot of delivery and, and carry out business there yeah. and, do, and do you have seats uh at, at their yeah oh yeah there's there's seats yeah and we have a walk-up window too we built a window for uh walking up so you can come inside carry out delivery everything you know so somebody said uh somebody asked whether you put um uh breadcrumbs in your ground beef to keep it together on um, the grill that's meatloaf I knew what I, I knew the answer i just want to hear you get mad and say that I, I did some at home the other day though i made salisbury steak just for fun, it was awesome. But yeah, I put some breadcrumbs in there. But no, we don't do that. Just, just, just the beef, buddy, and salt and pepper. That's it. Well, and that's a that's a pretty good formula. It's it sure has worked for uh, for High Point. And if I, uh, if I can give a tip, um, I always cook with this stuff, Malden sea salt. I it's have no idea. I, tell us about that. I have no idea what that is. It's a large flake um, sea salt. I think it's from uh, England. Ireland or England somewhere. Uh, it's from England, but I've been using it forever. And it's just, um, can you see, I see that. What makes it better? Uh, it's the best salt I've ever had in my life. It's not too, it's not, not too salty. Does that make sense? And it's no. just, it gives you a chew. <laughs> like if, so after you slice your steak or something or on your burger, psh, just a little bit on there, it's going to set it off. It's the best, it's the best seasoning I've ever used. I love it more than anything. So yeah, I mean, uh, so as a fine dining chef, do you use a lot of those fancy salts yeah. when you're cooking uh, different yeah. food? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm always trying to sneak something fancy into something. Will you ever do anything fine dining again, or you, or you, uh, did you retire from that? Uh, if I do, of, uh, you have permission to slap me in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ever. I'll leave that to, dude. I'm not gonna open anything better than pastoria. I love. I go. I eat there every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't. I don't want to get. I into know that. what you're saying. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that game and go up again. Dude, I ate a VC yet? Like, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? I, those guys can cook. The level from when I was a fine dining chef is so much higher now than it was when I was being a fine dining chef. And I just don't want to get into it, man. Too much trouble. Too much labor. And the other thing you've done at, at, in all your restaurants is you hire fine dining chefs. You, you hire right. really bona fide, well-trained, yeah. culinary schooled chefs to run these operations and, and they want to do this because basically you kind of let them be themselves. You they can let their yeah. hair hang down. They can do their thing. Yeah. And you know, from what I understand, your turnover is very, very low there. And you've got just, rid of these fools. you know, they stay, stick with us. I can't get rid of these guys. They stay, they stay with us forever. <laughs> well, you but, just got to keep, you got to keep opening, opening up more restaurants. That's, I'm uh, that's, that's, that's I'm the deal. Yeah. Speaking of which, what is next? What are you going to do? Um, are there going to be more high points or are there going to yeah. be more chicken outs or what's I'll, the story? Funny you ask, I was driving around today looking at restaurant at spots for high point, which is probably stupid, but we have a, um, <laughs> I have a sugar fire under construction in um, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We have one under construction in Jacksonville, Florida. We have one under construction in Dallas, you know, so we're not stopping. We're just going to keep Keep like we've always done, but just like, you know, safer and more careful. You know? You're going to have to curtail your international travel and do a little more domestic travel, it sounds like. Oh, it's been, it's been cur here. curtailed for me already. Hey, the last question. People want to know where to get that hat. Where do they, where do they point, get that hat? I, point, I think you can get them online. Uh, we got a new batch coming out, I think, in a couple of weeks. But um, all of our merchandise at High Point is hilarious and it's awesome. And um, you can get it online or just go to High Point and McCausland. We've got a ton of stuff. And can I say hi to Nick? You know, you know Nick Blue, his mom, Sherry, is allegedly watching this. I wanted to say hi to her, if that's okay. Hi, Sherry. And yeah, uh, hey, Sherry. Mike, you, you got one more place coming, and it's coming to, uh, to, to City Foundry. Yeah, we're going to do a, a little high, a small high point there, and it's called a little high. Oh, uh, okay. I don't I'm know sure. if any of y'all have been a little high, you know. No, no. Oh, that's Sherry probably, <laughs> and that's where we're going to end being a little high with Mike Johnson. <laughs> Hey, much appreciated. That burger looked great. I'm Thank enjoying you. the heck out of this drink. Happy Father's Day. And yeah. uh, we'll Thank see everybody so next time on the next Perfect Pairings. I hey, love doing it. Thank you, guys. Good to see thanks you. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Thank you.